trouble. Because you people and 62 million other Americans are listening to me right now. Because less than 3% of you people read books. Because less than 15% of you read newspapers. Because the only truth you know is what you get over this too. Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this too. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it ever falls in the hands of the wrong people. And when the largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network. So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You eat like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. Back in February of 2012, USA Today writer Tom Vandenbroek and editor Ray Locker were targeted just days after contacting the owners of Leone Industries, a Pentagon-funded PSYOP contractor. Mysteriously, websites popped up, some of them claiming that Vandenbroek and Locker worked for the Taliban. These journalists, they weren't even political. They were, they were investigating some mine company corruption or something. But Leone's co-owner created a batch of fake websites, social media accounts, and a fraudulent Wikipedia page in an effort to smear the journalist. And basically they created a whole set of fake websites that pretended to be fan websites of these journalists. And they just slowly turned them into complete uh, outposts for smearing them to try and uh, discredit their investigations. And uh, as is documented in this article, and as of, I've written many articles about since 2008, basically the Pentagon has put out a raft of fake websites that are designed to look like independent media sources. They admitted this in 2008. I'm not making it up. You'll probably see many of them out there when you read the internet on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's all part of Cass Sunstein's cognitive infiltration of so-called conspiracy theorists. Uh, and putting out disinformation to confuse people, lead them away from the truth, lead them down into dead ends, uh, and make everything futile. It wasn't just the fact that they had uncovered a PSYOP contractor that was given federal dollars regardless of the back taxes California-based Leone industry owners owed. They were exposing the major PSYOP they were a part of, American PSYOP 101. A 2000 report from the desk of the Defense Science Board Task Force titled The Creation and Dissemination of All Forms of Information in Support of Psychological Operations PSYOP, in Time of Military Conflict. This unclassified report is available in PDF form as a link in the description of the report you are listening to right now. The report details how PSYOPs were successful and unsuccessful in major PSYOP operations overseas. From this research, the task force found that military PSYOP offers a unique and powerful asset in military operations, both in peacetime and in war. Given the broad array of complex missions conducted by U.S. military forces, understanding the culture and preparation of the soft battle space is imperative to the conduct of successful operations. Members of the Defense Science Board Task Force include Dennis Boven of Bear Stearns, Brand Farron of Walt Disney Imagineering, Paul Kaladze of DARPA, to name a few. The financial arena in bed with the entertainment industry, the robotics industry, and the Defense Department. 
One of the diagrams from the report describes how strategic military and tactical psyops work. All signs of the times in the United States since 9-11 reeks of the genesis of a strategic psyop which is now morphing into a military psyop as indicated by the newly uncovered SOCOM document listing Utah, Texas, and Southern California as hostile areas. So that's a trick. When something's supposed to be declassified, they'll still hide it. So now for four or five days, they've had the different publications, Stars and Stripes, Military.com, and others going, we don't know if the document's real, but these conspiracy theorists, uh, uh, you know, claim that we want to take over Texas and Utah this, this summer and martial law. We're not going to have martial law this summer. You notice how they don't deny the operation, though, whatsoever? They just keep trying to, you know move the attention away from the fact that that's going on and just keep throwing out the conspiracy term and keep attacking us so it takes people's attention off of the fact that there that there is a mission going to happen just like it says in the documents they're not denying it today's psyop force includes a small but dedicated cadre of country experts familiar with the cultures and fluent in the languages of their accounts there is a small and equally dedicated cadre of production personnel operating a modest suite of production capabilities one such dedicated cadre of production personnel is Obama supporter and major Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein, who is now shelling out films aimed at attacking the Second Amendment. I don't think we need guns in this country, and I hate it, and I think that the NRA is a disaster area, he said in an interview last year. They're going to wish they weren't alive after I'm done with them. And now, Film Nation Entertainment has greenlit a drama entitled Ms. Sloan, in which an anti-gun lobbyist pushes through the federal government control legislation by targeting the gun rights lobby. On May 18th, 2012, Michael Hastings, reporting for BuzzFeed News, delved into the bipartisan amendment that neutralized the Smith-Munt Act of 1948 and Foreign Relations Authorization Act in 1987. The Smith-Munt Modernization Act of 2012 legalized the use of PSYOP propaganda in the United States funded by the State Department. A co-author of the bill, Representative Mac Thornberry of Texas, regarded Hastings' fears as silly. Matt Armstrong, former executive director of the State Department's Commission on Public Diplomacy, stated, There's this misconception that public diplomacy is propaganda. Propaganda is a lie, a deception, or intentional ambiguity, none of which can be led to effective public diplomacy by any country, let alone the U.S. A doublespeak propaganda statement if there ever was one. John Bound for Infowars.com I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. and There's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value.